Have you as well? Look at those kitties. What up, cat? What up? Be itchy, eh? Itchy. Made you itchy, eh? Haven't I? You big cat. Charlotte. See you've been sticking your nose. You've got white stuff on your nose. Now you've been sticking your nose. Cute. Uh, these old travel bags are going to be thrown out. They're only cheap ones. The uh, black plastic they're made out of that strengthens them and gives them stiffness, rigidity. It's crumbling like a bloody eggshell. Cheap crap. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use those instead of cardboard boxes, I'm going to use those to put my meters in. And I store them. And they're good at storage boxes. I've also got uh, another vintage TV lead. I've got a nice big national one. I've got to pick up. A, uh, a little Tempest with it, and another little Toshiba or National Black and White set, an AWA P1, a blue one, that's a the golden one of my stash, and a little uh, clock radio combo, small TV set. I've got a lead of uh, Facebook group I was following over time, so I wanted some vintage TV, so <laughs> looks like I'm going to score a fair bit, I'm going to have to make them a little bit more contained at the store. There's also an old Sharp, a 2006, I think, or 2004 Sharp TV near um, Vinny's bin. Been there for about six months outside. So while I'm on the way to getting that, my um, vintage TV is going to pick up this other TV before it gets scrapped. It's been sitting there for what looks like six months so far, so hopefully it's still there. It was there yesterday. So now I'm going to go past now that I've got a chance and pick it up. Add some, uh, if it works, it works. If not, I'll part it out and. Uh, Add the bits to my electronics stash because the days of um, electronic salvaging is very hard now. Days of greedy, 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 evil, bloody recycling centers not letting you have anything to get parts from. There's a good documentary on YouTube, State of Electronics. It's very well worth subscribing and following because it is a good group. Um, Dave Jones, Dick Smith, Leo Simpson from Silicon Chip Magazine, a couple of representatives from uh, Solana Semiconductor Australia which is Australia's only um, semiconductor manufacturing um, industry based in Queensland. They make um, Qualcomm Atheros chips for um, Apple iPhones. Make them right here in Australia. Australia's only semiconductor manufacturer and it's uh, the only one in the world adopting this new um, technique which no other chip manufacturer is doing. So very well worth following. So I'm going to end up with a nice good score today. Man, I get everything tested though. I don't have room behind it to put everything to test them. I might have to put them straight in storage because I don't have room here. Okay, well, I'm at the address now, viewers. Nice little place in the back of me, here, so. Yeah, a lot of older houses here that tend to be, um, they tend to have where the older TVs would really be. The majority, not so much, because people have fish tanked them and uh, thrown them in the scrap, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, I'm more likely to find vintage TVs here in Merbini area, so let's wait for the other, um, other place to turn up and I'll be able to pick the TVs up. Okay, viewers, this is the first remote control TV released in Australia, and this is a Delta Gun set, an actual Delta Gun National Panasonic. Wow! I'm lucky I got this for you. I got fish tanked it. It's a Delta Gun, a Delta Gun TV. A very good score. That's a very rare in Australia. An ultrasonic transducer top remote control. And the stand came with it. So you got this one. A little general Fujitsu black and white. And a genuine Delta Gun National Panasonic. And you can see the phosphors. And I looked in the back on the neck just to confirm, and yes, it's got the three things on the neck, like a Delta gun. And they're all fat neck and the tube. It's a, definitely a Delta gun. Division number one, with a Hitachi coordinate from Japan, original. Black and white. It's a general. Fujitsu general. Made in Japan. The general Tro Corporation Japan. Model number GC121. This is not a 12 volt DC. And I see a lot of these at shops for 10 bucks, so a 10... 12 volt DC as well. VHF only. Not a problem with me because I've got some good VHF modulators. I can reuse really these and test them out properly. Oh god, this thing is heavy. Oh, look at the flyback and resistor. Oh, very good quality competitor in here. Some circuit boards. There was two Dick Smith electronics TVs I smashed. And you skip, I got those out. 
the second ports. I'm gonna put to the moat. Anyway, I gotta get to my I'm gonna get to Red Cliffs now to pick up the other TV that I scored, which is an old AWA P1. Alright, I'm gonna go uh, yeah. quick view over this TV. Huh, <laughs> I'm gonna put the bloody remote, I'm so excited. Where do I put the bloody remote to this thing? Anyway, it's a model, model CW2630 CS282N. Oh, that's a chassis number. Okay. This is a Dr. Gun TV, as you can see there, and the big neck, thick neck. Very well built. There we are. A Dr. Gun TV. I don't want to scratch the camera up too much. As you can see, those dots on the screen. Can't test it yet. It's got a motorized tuning, because it's got a remote, so this is all motorized in here. The tuning's definitely motorised. Again, a um, VHF only TV, but that's no problem because I've got some good um, VHF only modulators for this. Wow, what a good score. Something 505 slash 79. I wonder if that's a date code, 1979. Yeah. There's the uh I came off two DSC TVs, they circuit boards, so I've got some parts there. Alright, let's go get the AWA P1. Here's that TV, I found a side of those. So, yeah, came back with some bloody good goodies today, and the, uh, it turns out that guy is actually a collector. He's a picker, so, felt like I was in an episode of Australian Pickers. So, he's got street lights, one street light, which I'm going to come back for, an old Compton Park that's a motor from the 50s off a sign machine, I'm going to come back for. Heaps of old, early um, 80s, late 70s record players, which I've got, got for me. Heaps of um, early retro electronics, so he's got a lot of that sort of stuff, so he's kept keeping me in mind. Let's lay this for part. It's got genuine sharp speakers. Huh, sharp still make genuine speakers. Interesting. Pretty small chassis in this thing. The diagnostic thing there, it's interesting to make it so you can get to it. Alright, get this out of here, we can get it for parts while we're still available. Here's my score, that's my scores. Check this out, little TV and clock radio combo. This was a good score. These are not very common. Main off, VHF tuner, which is a bonus because I've got VHF modulators and my um, Android box for Netflix. Look at this one, RWA Mod P1P, a Valve TV, which is a main gold mine, this one. These are very well worth fixing up. And the Korean made solid state Tempest. Oh, you can see that. Very cheap to make these things. These are the cheap supermarket brands of their day. These weren't very good quality, but nowadays they are a little bit collectible. If you see one of these, get this first. Don't worry about these ones. I only got this in because of um, they get a bit collectible nowadays. This is the main reason why I counted a whole pick in the first place was this device here. Very good score this one. Oh, Chris Renane, um, uh, Fairland 500 score on one just like this. P1P. No plug top, so I'm gonna have to. Uh, this, this is gonna be my restoration project. If that works. These both work quite well. This one doesn't because it hasn't got a plug top. I'm going to have to uh, put one on there. Might fit a plug top on that at some stage and uh, do a quick, careful check of the components inside before I power this thing up. It's going to be my restoration project. Deep image. I know um, Machine Man had one of these too and he smashed it because it had water, I thought. Personally, I wouldn't have done that. I still would have fixed it. There we are. Thanks for watching.